Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical humans reacts and we have yet another follow-up to some video series that we've done already talking about the thefts of the British Museum where roughly 2,000 artifacts went missing after a former museum employee had sold them off over a period of about 20 years and this wasn't caught until not that long ago and they've been going through trying to recover it and we finally have an update where the british museum recovers an additional 268 more items uh following the theft scandal that left heads turning Ooh, how's that for an intro yeah it's a very uh it's a very big intro so yes uh 2000 items have been found to be missing these uh, artifacts date from 1500 BC to the 19th century. They primarily comprise jewelry of gold and semi-precious stones. Um, uh, at present, 626 items have been recovered, with this large influx of 268 being a big boost to that number. Um, the British Museum, in a statement, uh, revealed that they have a further 100 items that they have identified as... Uh, having been stolen, uh, you know, or that they found, uh, or stolen items that they found out there in the world yeah. that they believe they can also retrieve. Um, uh, so that should hopefully see this total reach up into the 700 soon. Which is still a far cry from the 2000, but it was initially believed that the majority of these objects had been uh, destroyed, melted down, scrapped, cut up, um, pretty much disassembled of their historic context and used yeah. for their scrap value. Yeah, uh, after all, these are, you know, very easily identifiable objects made of things like gold, topaz, you know, stuff that is valuable at a pawn shop or a, uh, you know, junk metal dealer for the, you know, monetary value of the item it's, uh, of the you know, materials itself well don't don't undersell it too much you are talking about precious metals precious gemstones yeah even uh, in their uh, current uh, configuration they're still worth a lot of money yeah and that's but not those are the ones we're finding <laughs> but that no i think the ones we're finding are the ones that were thankfully sold to illegal smugglers and uh in ancient mm -hmm. goods traders like it, it sucks that they're going through these methods, but realistically, we're lucky that they went into those markets more so than the scrap markets because now we can actually start to trace them and hopefully in the process also take down some of these theft rings, which I think is a huge plus. It's a shame that they even exist, but I think that's a potential that they could use to actually try and combat that. Yeah, and I personally love just how much eBay comes up in these in, in these rings and whatnot as like how these people are selling stuff. Like it's a public listing on eBay with an image that matches what has been stolen. That's that's how they're tracking a lot of this down. Is why are you posting this on eBay? It's like they want. It's like they want to get caught. But see, that's just and it. I is am there for that. The the British Museum employee who sold most of the artifacts, Peter Higgs. That's how he fenced most of them was by yeah. selling them over the course of the 20 years on eBay. Pretty much yeah. whenever he needed money or wanted to do something fun, he would just pawn an item on eBay. And, yeah. you know, eBay, uh, understandably, like, they see hundreds of thousands of listings. It's very hard to weed out legitimate versus illegitimate trade. But yeah. to be smuggling antiquities on eBay is next-level yeah. bold. You use yeah, your personal I mean. address, you link it to your yeah. bank accounts. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're using eBay, and I am there for that because if they're all using eBay, we have a we have a very, uh, shall we say, uh, arrestable level of stupid. But that's not always the case, and you can find ways around the systems, unfortunately. But, yeah, the British government has detectives that are on the case that are working to try and figure this out and it it basically means that <laughs> that they're trying to recover it and the crazy thing in my mind is some of the items were selling for as low as 40 pounds yeah and that's yep. the part that i find insane is just how low they're being sold for and how cheap and it really ah god i know we've it, talked it, it, it really it, it really speaks to the nature of this crime 
being a cash grab. You are selling at undervalue to quickly and quietly move the good off of your possession and uh, have it go out for resale later by the second party who has more time and less of a connection to the actual act of theft. But it, it also just highlights so many additional flaws and problems like the ability for an employee to get away with the theft of over 2,000 objects shows an yeah. inherent flaw in their collections and in their systems to the point yeah. where they had to go through and audit their collections just to see what they yeah. had. Yeah, the security and the in and you know the the collections inventory both seem to have had major flaws to the point that uh, the director uh, during the time in which this theft occurs and uh, when these uh, thefts were you know knowledge of the accessor made public, uh, Hartwig Fisher, he's had to resign his post. Um, well, yeah, this kind of scandal to happen yeah. under your nose is, is an embarrassment. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, like, I'm telling you, it's just so bad that the British Museum, you know, forced their director to resign. That's, that's something the British Museum really doesn't do too much of. <laughs> and the British Museum is known for being an upstanding and extremely ethical organization that is a yeah, beacon like, for other institutions around the like, world to follow yeah 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 like we finally found a moral line they were not willing to cross <laughs> uh, but then i if and you know some people may ask how does this happen but realistically a lot of times institutions do have issues with collections where storage space becomes a very big issue with trying to maintain the collections a lot of museums predate computers and digital inventories and a lot of times have just physical paper inventories. And I'll tell you what, knowing these larger institutions, I would not be surprised if their artifact count is in the millions at this age, at this rate. So, like, you're talking 2,000, that is under, what, less than 0.02%. Yeah, something like that, yeah. So, I think the number might be smaller, but yeah, this is, you know, he, he, he stole 2,000 objects, which is a big number, but compared to what is down there, it is it is a teardrop in the ocean. But it's still cultural heritage, it's still cultural yeah. uh, history, and it just, it goes to show that institutions, even like the British Museum, who like to claim and posture themselves as a great place to hold cultural and historic artifacts more so than native uh, native yeah. countries and yeah. institutions yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah the british museum has long held the line that they are the sole institution on earth capable of properly housing safeguarding and maintaining uh cultural heritage and here we are with enough artifacts to fill an entire uh wing of a museum if not an entire museum in some cases oh, just yeah gone Sold on eBay. Yeah. For 40 freaking pounds. <laughs> well, let's do the quick math on that, eh? 2,000 artifacts at 46 pounds at the lowest. Minimum, the guy walked away with about 9 grand. Was it worth it? Yeah, that's 46 uh, euros, 40 pounds. That's still only a few grand minimum. I mean, I'm sure he got some big prices for some of the bigger stuff, but that's not... That's a drop in the bucket comparatively for what you're doing. And on, on that annoying rant, I think that's a good point for us to wrap up, don't you say? Yeah. Um Yeah, I will Yeah. We'll, we'll let that we'll let that be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you looking up the conversion? Yeah, I'm looking at the conversion. So at forty at forty pounds uh an artifact and 2,000 artifacts uh, that comes to 80,000 pounds sterling or 101,560 US dollar. Mm. Crazy. But yeah. on that notion, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.